Welcome to Kicking It Local, the podcast all about the football community in South Australia. Today I'm joined by the 2021 RAA NPL SA Sergio Milter winner. And he's the other half of the McCabe Twins in the State League 1 at Modbury Jets. Hey, Mr. McCabe, mate. Thank you so much for joining me. No, thank you for having me. Today I'm out on the road again. I'm at the Smith Partners uh, Stadium, which is your home, uh, your new home ground for the Modbury Jets. Currently uh, getting renovated at the moment. We've got a bit of uh, stuff going on outside, but inside the club rooms. It's half finished, but it's, it's getting there. It's looking really good at the... Uh, the, the stage is at the moment. Yeah, no, you know, it'll be, well, once it gets all finalised, it's going to, you know, look really, really nice, you know, with the club rooms, um, you know, getting all renovated and change rooms and yeah. everything. So it's going to be, you know, a really nice club and I think, you know, promote um, Mobby Jets even further and, you know, get some interest from other players as well. Absolutely. Well, well I've got the heaps to get through today. we got, uh, you're a Sergio Milton winner and uh, you're the, the reigning Sergio Milton winner, but you're in a weird scenario that you're playing in State League One this year, the second division down. So we're going to get through all that, why you've uh, decided to leave the NPL, your aspirations in the future, because you used to play for LA United in the uh, the youth youth league. And um, now you're, I want to see if you want to get back up there at uh, the professional level at some point, but we've got heaps to get through. And also, which is just around the corner for the club as well, is a first for a State League team in South Australia, a uh, Australia Cup round of 32 place. And you're going to be going on the road for that. So heaps to get through. But first of all, let's kick it all off. You're a twin. You're an identical twin. And I know all about this because my oldest brothers are twins and they're identical as well. And I know exactly what it's like to, as a, as a brother of twins, what it's like for them to how they're so close together. They do everything together and inseparable. Um, what's it like for you being a twin and having your brother and even playing alongside him and doing exactly the same thing? Yeah, look, growing up, you know, having a twin is the best thing ever. You've always got, you know, like one of your best friends or, you yeah. know, your best friend, you know, growing up with you, doing all, um, you know, ties at home, you know, kicking around the ball in the, yep. in the backyard, learning all the tricks together. And then, you know, then you translate that into playing, you know, first team football, at, you know, a higher level, yeah. um, being able to play together. And we work well off each other, you know, we push each other to get better and better. Um, so it's amazing having a twin. It's um, a lot of people that go for a football career have to do it alone. And it's not easy because they go play you're still locally but if they go overseas they've got to go by themselves they've got to go certain places and uh do it on their own unless they've got family with them you're lucky you got your brother and you've played at pretty much every club together um what's that been like uh, for yourself for yourself personally first of all to to go to like um you started metro stars blue eagles la united now you're in mobbury jets what's it been like to have him along the way during your football career Oh, it's been the best thing ever because you always, you, you know, you're always driving each other. You know, whether you have a good game, bad game, you yeah. always talk about. It. You have someone to, you know, debrief it all with. Um, and being able to play with Liam um, over all the years has been the best thing ever. Like I, would, yeah. you know, you wouldn't change it for the world. And you know, playing within South Australia, you know, we'll stay together. Yeah. Play, you know, we love playing together. We're not yeah. going to change that. But you know, in A League, if there was an A League aspiration, or um, you know, that's what we really strive for, then we would separate and you know, give it a good crack um, on yeah. your own because you know. Um, in that sort of scenario, you don't have the luxury yeah. um, to do that. But in South Australia, we're happy. You know, we're loving our football. We love playing together. You know, we're always, you know, working well off each other as well as the other teammates as well. So, yeah, nah, it's the best thing ever. What happens if there was an opportunity for one of you to go further or even just go locally and the other one can't come with you? How is it? Has that happened yet for you, or is that something you've thought about? Yeah, look, it, you know, if that if that sort of opportunity arose, yeah. you would you would take that with two hands and you know give it a good crack. So you, yeah, we would we've already had that chat together, and we would you know split up and give it a give it a good yeah. shot because you want to obviously make it to the A League. Um, so I just you know after winning so many things, I just want to be given that opportunity at yeah. some point, um, which I'd really like to strive for. Yeah, and. We're looking at the positives of having your brother by your side at all times, but what's the, uh, not negatives, but what's some of the downsides of having him by your side all the time? Is there anything or is he actually... Nah. Nah? nah. You I, love I've, it? I have no negatives here. Yeah, nah. <laughs> Nothing? Nah, we get along perfectly. We never fight. We always understand oh, really? each other. Yeah. yeah, nah. We, um, it's the best thing. I can't even say one negative at all. Nothing at all. Nah, nah. So you're gonna get like, just leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nothing. Honestly, nothing. Nah, we're always calm and collected, and yeah, um, and now nah, we never get annoyed at each other or anyone. Yeah, nah, it's good. Well, you see some twi- uh, identical twins that they uh, they have some s- certain certain traits that they copy each other and um, know finish off their sentences. They um, know certain things about each other better than anyone else because you're pretty much like a same person but split in half. <laughs> but 
is there anything that you guys have that's unique to the two of you? Yeah, well, we've, you know, with Liam and I, we um, always, you know, have the same hobbies, we have yeah. the same interests, things like that. But even on the on, on the soccer, on the park as well, we always know where each other are, even if we don't have to look. Like, we always know exactly where each other are. Yeah. Um, and it's almost like half the time, like, you can just be playing normally. You don't even yeah. look at them once and you know where they are. It's, I don't know, it's a little bit, it's a little bit like, interesting, but it's, I reckon it works really well in a favour when you're playing together in a team. I think that's a really, really positive. So you've had that, like, on the pitch, you, you just know exactly where he is at yeah. all times. Yeah, all times, yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> can, can awesome. Can explain a little bit of you can't explain it though or yeah can you? I don't know it's just like, what you, don't, like? you don't even have to um, look behind you you know every you know good soccer player checks their shoulder before they get the ball and yeah, things yeah. like that but you wouldn't even have to like I know exactly where he'll be um, so all I gotta do is just get the ball a quick half a second and then play yeah. the ball and he'll be there so Jeez. yeah it, it, I don't know it's probably an advantage and it yeah. works well um, that it worked out that way so it's absolutely <laughs> perfect so yeah we absolutely love love that nice and then what's it like around your having your brother there what's it like with other people do they treat it any differently or is that just no, now. no, I think I think everyone sort of, you know, at the club and in the team, everyone knows what um everyone's, you know, yeah. strengths are, what their weaknesses are. Yeah. So, you know, one of our strengths is being playing together and having that connection and, you know, yeah. very attacking players. So that's what we um what we base ourselves off. So no, all the guys are great, all, all the all the lads. Yeah. Um and everyone like I said, everyone uses their strengths um all together to and that's why we've got where we are today. Yep. So you're playing in State League One now, you're the current Sergio Melo winner. But I'll talk about that later when we get to your um, NPL career. But before that, you you went and played at LA United Youth with your brother alongside you was there because the whole career has been alongside him. But what was it like to play at LA United? Because every other club you've played at are football clubs um, that have the senior levels and all that in the NPL. LA United's a little bit of a different setup because their NPL team is their youth setup from the the feeder team pretty much for the uh, the A League team, a professional club. What was it like for you to go in that environment and be uh, involved in a youth set up at the Reds? Yeah, look, playing at you know, LH United, you know, it, you know, once a kid, you know, hears that and then yeah. they take you on board, you know, you're excited, things like that. And, you know, we spent some time in there, but yep. um, we left on our own accord because it, we just thought that, the, you know, the door wasn't quite open. Yep. It was quite um, narrowed down to certain people and all that. So, but no, look, it, it was good to experience that. And, you know, yeah. it's, at least you can say to your kids and that, you know, I played for LH United yeah. and we got to train with the first team a lot um, and yep. thought we are going to break through, but it sort of just, yeah, halted out of nowhere. What it, What is that feeling? Because I've heard it with other people, they say they leave the um, LH United um, because of those reasons go back to club football uh, other clubs what was it for you that just you realised that wasn't quite right with that set up for yourself yeah Half the time, you can sort of you can read personalities, you can read, yep. you can read, um, and also when they start changing your positions, that quite aren't your, you know, yep. your natural position. And there's there's nothing about you know helping out the team and you know going just for a game or two yeah. or things like that. You know, you everyone does that. I, yep. I'll do it here at Mobbury, so I would Liam. But when they start doing it quite regularly, and you can sort of you just get a sense. You can you can get a sense of you know where the direction is. Yeah. Um, and that was yeah probably one of the main things as well as you know a bit of maybe a clash of personalities as well, a bit of a bit of everything. Yeah. Yep. From there, you went to. Um, to the LA Blue Eagles. So what was it like to move to the Blue Eagles? Was it an easy op uh, option for yourself and your brother? Yeah, well, look, we went, it just shows sort of how le like how level headed we are. We, yeah. You know, playing at, you know, LA's not quite a high profile, you know, sort yeah. of environment to then going to State League One Blue Eagles at that time. We had a lot of interest from NPL clubs, but, you know, we chose them um, because, you know, we just had a, we had to sit down with some people and they seemed really level headed. We, and our own ambitions was to get them up. And, um, yep. and that year we did get them up. And we've done a similar thing at Mobbery this year is, you know, after winning such yeah. a high prestigious award, you know, close to home, full time work now as a physio, yeah. um, leading therapies, we want to, you know, come here because they're great family club great culture and we want to get them up to the NPL. When you go to a club like Blue Eagles or Mobra Jets, do you go to them and say like, I'm going to come here with my brother or I want to, I'm aspiring to go here with my brother. Is that, is it a package to do all the time with the local, in the local leagues for well, yourself? Well, most of the time, because obviously, um, Liam and I are very similar players. We've yep. obviously got slightly different um, attributes, both strengths and weaknesses yeah. to each other. Um, but most clubs want, um, you know, both of us because yep. we both, you know, we're both very attacking. We can we can defend really well as well. Yeah. Sort of across the park. Um. So no, they usually take us on both. Um. Because they know how well we work with each other as well. Yeah. Um, and as well as you know, we work well with you know all our teammates around us. So I try and you know, get around everyone. No one's being cocky, things like that. So yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's absolutely perfect. So when you were at the uh, the Blue Eagles, you got them up. What was it like to to go there with that aspiration of helping them up and then that finally achieving that with the club? 
Oh, it's a it's a massive aspiration. You know, that's the at the start of yeah. the, um start start of the season. It's like a six month project or whatever, even sometimes eight months. And you know, then you actually get to that sort of that stage, and it was the best feeling ever. Yeah. You know, you you talked about with the you know the chairman, you talked about with the coaches what you wanted to do, um, and to get them up, and that's a similar thing here in Robbery. That's yeah. the same sort of thing that's happening, and hopefully we can back it up again. Did you get rewarded after the being? being able to get them up was there any reward for that or was it just um get on with the season afterwards? no it was honestly just get on with the season you know yeah. they all see sat us down individually and you know thanked players and things like that and and all that sort of side of things but yeah you know there's it, it was just yeah they were really appreciative of you know getting up into the mpl after because the type of club yeah. like that um probably should be up in the mpl after all their long history um so no it was you know we just carried on the next year um and yeah went from there with um with your time at the blue eagles you also become captain um, what was that like to to put on the armband and represent the club as the captain of the uh, Blue Eagles? Oh no, nah, being captain <laughs> was absolutely amazing, you know. And I was um, really um, privileged to be able to do that, um, and you know, got to teach um, a lot of the young um, younger players a lot of things and um, and work off e- off each other. But no, nah, being captain, I absolutely really really enjoyed it. Um, just we just had um, at Blue Eagles last year, quite a few players leave, some issues within the club. So um, this is at the of, end of the season. Yeah, end of the season, even middle to end of the season. Yeah, there's a few things going on. Won't highlight that in here, but um, yeah, we sort of you know utilised a lot of youngsters. Youngsters that probably just didn't have enough you know experience. Yeah. But I'm all for youngsters, and you know there probably was a big learning curve. But yeah, being captain was amazing, and I definitely do it again. That season can't underestimate it. It was three games that you won all season. Bottom of the ladder, relegated to State League One. Everyone thought, all right, you guys lost, that's it. But somehow you managed to get 24 votes and take out the Sergio Melter winner from a club that only won a handful of games and wasn't going to be in the NPO again. You managed to get the biggest award for an individual player in the top league in South Australia. What was that moment like for you to, to see your name at the top on that night? Um, what was that like? Oh, it's the best feeling. You can't, you can't actually imagine it. You know, showing up all your yeah. family, um, you know, family, girlfriend, and all that, all, all there supporting you. You know, yeah. finally pulling it off. But I actually can't even put the words to the feeling. Yeah. It, was, it was unreal, and especially after getting relegated. I think it's only been happened twice, or f- yeah, twice or three times before that a Not relegated many. team someone's won the Sergio Melder. But it was, yeah, it was amazing. Oh, I was the, the yeah. just seeing you know my name on the board, and then after that final, I came down to the final game, the very very yeah. final game of round twenty two, um, and yeah, ended up taking it by a point, so which is amazing. I know you beat uh, Alex Mullen for that one. Yeah, yeah, That's by, by a point. It got really fine, yeah. Well, did you think you were going to have it? Or did you see your name go, all right, cool, I'm up there for now, but I don't think I'm going to win it? Was that what going through your mind or what was going? You get a pretty good sense with how you yeah. play results and obviously how you play. So I was pretty confident, um, you know, the v- the very first half of the, the year. Yeah. Um, and then towards the end, I was it was quite strong as well because mm. um, I had a couple of injuries niggling around within the middle of the season and I sort of got it fixed. Um, still playing, but I was yeah. having to fix it up. That's but yeah, un- that was good. That's unreal because I remember sitting, sitting there, I was on the table with all the media and we are all like, nah, there's no way the <laughs> bottom of the ladder is going to win. Like, the, is it, we did not expect it. When we saw you won, we, we were excited for you, but we were like, for a second, it took a while to register yeah. that that just happened. But for you, did it register straight away? Oh, to be honest, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm confident. <laughs> I, I backed myself. Yeah. So I, I wasn't surprised, no, because I thought I had a good year. It yeah. Obviously, a good year individually, but uh, yeah. as, as a team, it wasn't a good year. But um, yeah, I knew you know how you know how good I am, what I do well, what I yeah. don't do as well, and I've got to work on those sort of things. And uh, I'll always back myself, and I'm confident to be able to you know take that off, and I'm so proud that I actually did. Yeah, nah, we're happy for you with that. But then the next step after that, because that's a really good selling point, because you can go to any club, you can go to Adelaide City, you can go to Comet or whatever and tell them, I'm a Sergio Melbourne winner, I deserve to be in the NPL because obviously that status does say that you can you can do it at the top level. So what made you go to back to State League 1 again after coming off an incredible season for yourself and pulling off the, uh, the, uh, the ultimate um, achievement for an individual player? Look, you know, coming off that, you go like, you're so full of emotions, yeah. you're so proud of yourself, you know, all your family and, you know, your girlfriend, things like that, all support you. Mm. Everyone gets you through. It's not just me. It's all that, all that support mm. base as well. But, you know, I could have um, gone to, yeah. you know, like quite a bit of interest and I really thank all the clubs for having their interest and, you know, because yeah. you never know year in, year out, you never know what will happen. But, um, yeah, I just thought, you know, came and spoke to, um, to Mobbury. You know, really family club. Everyone was lovely. They had a really good drive and direction at, um, at the yep. club. And obviously, I was pretty keen regarding that sort of aim to mm. get promoted to the NPL. And the aim we set at the start of the season was to get promoted into the NPL, make, win the cup or make the final of the cup and also get in the FFA Cup. And we've achieved that so far. We've got a couple of weeks left that we just got to tidy 
up loose ends and hopefully yep. get it all done. But yeah, full time work close to home as well was two massive things. Yep. So Modbury's closer to home for you now. Yeah, it's yep. about five six minutes away. Oh, so perfect. it's perfect. And everyone at Modbury's great. Yep. Yeah. So you're still you're still only young. You're only twenty three. Um, I was going to say what the hell would your brother, but he's twenty three <laughs> as well. But um, you're both very very young. So you still got a long road ahead of you because. You're hoping, I'm assuming you'll want to get back into um, a higher level, not just only NPL, but try and aspire to the A-League as well. Is is that what's on the cards for you at some point? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, you know, we, we talk about, you know, getting a name for yourself and, yeah. and well, like Liam and I, we're pretty, you know, level-headed, you know, yep. if anyone talks to us, you know, we're, you know we're, not, we're not cocky or anything like that, you know, we'll, we'll give run yeah. at the time of day um, and yeah, you know, I want to play A-League, yep. um, I just want, you know, after winning such awards and things like that, um, you think that I would have been given a shot and I want a shot, I want I want to prove myself, um, yep. in, in, you know, in the A-League or even wherever else it may take me, whatever. Well, you're getting yourself on the national stage now, Australia Cup. You're at Mobridgets. You guys are about to play a massive game for the club, for a state league team as well. We can't forget that because Australia Cup is a massive thing and every club strives to be in there. Ally United's lucky enough to have won it three times already. Um, you guys are now the um, first non-NPL team from South yeah. Australia to to play in this uh, prestigious... Well, it's becoming like a prestigious a prestigious cup now, the Australia Cup. What's the vibes like at Modbury Jets now that um, you guys are about to play this massive game? Oh, everyone's everyone's absolutely buzzing. You know, we'll, we'll sit down and we'll discuss, you know, what we need to do, yeah. you know, get, a, get our aim. Um, we've got to stick to our process that we usually do. Um, and the coaching staff's great for that. They do all that sort of side of things. So yep. I can't... Everyone in the coaching staff and all the support networks are very, very good here. But yeah, it's a massive game for the club. I um, guess you know, Mobbe Jets yeah. on the national stage, yeah. um, and also the first time a state league side's ever gone into the FA Cup. So that's another, you know, another yep. credit to Mobbe Jets. So we, we're going up there, and we're going up there to win. Yeah, we spoke. I've sp- like heard A League players love the cup. Some clubs don't take it seriously in the A League, but I think now we're at a point where this is being taken very seriously. Um, when you, especially when you see. Young, uh, NPL clubs that are make it far in around the 32 and knock out the big clubs like Western Sydney Wanderers, which LA City have done. It, I think that's when clubs realise this is serious now. We don't want to lose to clubs like that. Mm. Now you guys are getting that opportunity to play. You're taking on another um, uh, local team. Uh, yeah, Armadale. Yeah, Armadale. Yeah. So what's, uh, it's an away trip now. So you guys yep. get to leave the state and play interstate. Yep. How are you guys been uh, preparing for that as a as um, now playing away from home. Yeah, literally. Oh, it's, it's exciting. It's it's <laughs> it's what we wanted. We actually went into the draw. Obviously, we didn't mind who we got because you know we backed yeah. ourselves against anyone. Good experience, things like that. Um, but you know, even getting a trip away is just another bonus, isn't it? Get a bit of more bonding session, and it's yeah. going to be an amazing trip. But we're going up there not just for a trip. We're going up there to get the job done, and then whatever else happens up there, you know, we enjoy that. Absolutely. That, that time. Well, when I spoke to you, um, I got the privilege to chat to you after your um, your semi final win, uh, which was the uh, qualifying round in the uh, the Federation Cup here to get into the round of thirty two when you beat. Um, Vipers in an incredible 4-1 victory. It was also a seven-second goal there as well. <laughs> <laughs> it was um, after that game, I got to chat to you on the broadcast. I'm down here with Hamish McCabe, mate. You Congratulations, you're through to the round of 32. The first State League team from South Australia to do so. How are you feeling? Oh, it's a massive achievement for the club. You know, getting to a final now as well, you know, in South Australia, and now, you know, getting on the national stage. So it's a massive achievement for Maury Jets, um, and, you know, we that all to our fans, yeah. Round of 32, who do you want to compete against, an A-League team or another State League team across the, uh, Australia? I, I, to be honest, I don't mind. Uh, chuck us, you know, we want to we want to compete with the best, so chuck us whoever. Or, you know, and Robert Jets might take on Newcastle Jets, hope. <laughs> That'll be good. Congratulations, mate. Go and celebrate with the boys and another great performance from you guys here today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And you, I did mention as a joke, I said, hopefully you guys get Newcastle Jets. Nearly. I was nearly close. Happened. It nearly <laughs> happened. LA United got them. Um, yeah. So, but would you have wanted to get an A-League team? Oh, look, we, we were happy to get an, a, like, an A-League side. Because, yeah. you know, then you're going up against the best of the best. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And then that's, you know, more exposure again. Yeah. Um, but being just being in the FA Cup is exposure. But, you know, getting an A-League side, yeah, it, it's, yeah. it's further exposure. And we would have been happy. Obviously, it would have been hosted, you know, in South Australia. Yeah. And probably the State Centre or somewhere or Camden or somewhere. Some, yeah. Somewhere on the ground. Um, but, yeah, we, again, we would have gone in back in ourselves. But it would have been, yeah, very, yeah. very hard. But we were looking forward to that. It didn't really matter. Yeah. But now you may have the opportunity to do that eventually because you... You've got a team that um, they're a strong team, but you're they're almost at your similar level because they're both um, semi-pro teams. Yeah. So you may have a chance to go through next level. Is that because you got a a lower level team, not A League level? Are you still going to go in with the same mindset to try and win them, or is yeah. it gonna, 
Yeah, it didn't matter if we got Nay League or, or you know yeah. Armadale or Coburn City. Didn't matter. Didn't matter. You know who we got. We were still going to stick yeah. to our process, stick to the way we play, not change anything. Obviously, still analyze the other team and make a couple of adjustments. But we, you know, we do what we do best, and our attacking um, is really, really you know strong. And we jets, and even our defensive is quite quite strong as well. We got yeah. some you know good experience, a mixture of ages in the team as well. But yeah, I'm no, I'm buzzing. I, I back us. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty yeah pretty confident. But again, we need to execute. It's yeah. about playing the best game we have. Absolutely. Not let's forget about the game. But you guys are going interstate for a game. It's like a road trip for you boys. <laughs> you guys planned anything to, to, to do over there or are you just going to focus on the game or are you going to have a bit of fun as well? Oh, look, we'll focus on the game. You yeah. know, we'll get the game side of things. Um, you know, we'll go there to do a job. Yeah. But after that, you know, we'll do some probably a bit of, bit of sightseeing if we have a bit of time, you know, go a couple of dinners or who yeah. knows what's going to happen. No, yeah. no one knows. So um, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I think some of the guys um, <laughs> said <laughs> possibly a casino trip. Who knows? <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Who knows? So anywhere you want to go in Western Australia or not? I've, I've, I've been to Perth um, probably about two and a half years ago. So, um, you know, going to Optus Stadium would be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of, I think, a couple of soccer games over there. I think May United is playing over there. Yeah. Person, um, Aston Villa and things like that. So it's going to be pretty cool. Going to Optus Stadium, you know, seeing the Swan River um, yep. a little bit again. Um, things like that and anything else that arises. No, it will be uh, an experience and a half. You, you planned anything yet or you just going to take it with the... The no, um, go with the flow. No, we haven't. Um, obviously, uh, as a team, we've got our you know bookings, and we're pretty confident. You know what time yeah. things like that. But you know that's all being finalised still, yeah. so I can't give you exact details. But um, yeah, no, I think you know leaving um even the Wednesday, the Thursday, coming back the Friday. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's the sort of plan of attack, and you know maybe a couple of dinners and lunches, and um probably a nice breakfast would be good. Yeah. Um, so thing, things like that, and yeah, I'm sure there'd be some sort of you know yeah. um, team bonding um event or something. But I'm not exactly sure. I can't tell you. Yeah, but after the game, make sure if you do win, you need to go and celebrate the next <laughs> yeah, day. Hundred percent. We need do something for yeah, sure. you've got to because this is a big, a big uh, achievement. Have you ever, before you got this opportunity, did you ever have aspirations when the cup started? What was it like? Because I've, as a fan, I've always loved the FFA Cup, what it used to be known as now the Australia Cup, because it opens up doors for teams like yourself, like your team, players like yourself, um, and it opens up the doors for that, and also another avenue to to see what the next generation of uh, players and um, uh, clubs, what mm. they can do, because now yeah. with talks of the national second division, it opens up so many doors 100%. now. But did you ever have, when that um, the cup was revealed, it was going to be um, uh, going to be fleshed out. It's going to happen. Did you ever have aspirations back then, about eight years ago, I think, when it started? Yeah, well, look, I think I think the perspective of the cup, you know, everyone used to, there was a bit of a, you know, myth mm. out there, you know, do people take it more easier in the cup and things like that? And it pro- yeah. probably was, to start, it probably was a bit of that. But I think, honestly, now, I think everyone treats the cups like the exact same as important as the league. Yeah. Because now, you know, back in the day, it was just, you know, cups, competition between the teams. But now you get that chance to go on a national stage and, yeah. you know, promote clubs, and obviously, like, Maury Jets um, on the national, getting yeah. their name out there on the national stage, which is which is massive. And I think that's, you know, why everyone wants to the FFA Cup now. They want to, yeah. you know, go on versus the best teams and get exposure for players for yeah. the club. But yeah, it's great. It's great exposure. And um, but you're at Mob Jets now. You're working very hard. You guys are on fire, top of the ladder, um, playing very well against um, a t- some tough teams. Because yeah, it's tough. How have you found the State League one? Because a lot of the um, clubs that are in there want to get out of it and go yeah. back into the NPL. Yeah. Once because it's like a a whirlpool as soon as you get stuck in you're stuck in there for a while and it's hard to get out you've always got strong teams coming down from the NPL how have you found it coming from an NPL club into the uh, brand new State League 1 club for yourself what's it been um, what's it been like uh, playing against those other big clubs as well Honestly, the State League, and Liam and I were talking about it before, you know, at times, I think the State League can even be sometimes tougher than the NPL. Yeah. Because the, the NPL, you know, it's more that technical side of things, and you, sometimes you actually have a bit more time on the ball, whereas the State League, the, some of the players, mm. you know, don't really give you time on the ball. They just fly through you anyway. So it's definitely more harder challenges, um, and there is, it's a very, very tricky league to get out of. And I think the key word you used was the whirlpool. Once yep. you get stuck in it, you're in there for many years. So that's why, you know, Mobbury wanted to get, you know, we're down there, we want to get straight straight up um, as quick as we can, and fingers crossed we get the end of the season done, and we get that job done which is the main aim for the for the club and the players yeah and not only they recruited you and your brother npl players but they also recruited a couple other um npl players as well from last season that got relegated with croatia um what's it been like having four players that have previous very recent experience of the npl playing in a state league one team how's that been for the club yeah um, 
I, I think it's I think it's um you know brought a uh, sort of a higher higher level a yeah. bit more professionalism as well um you know having like, players you know like Matt mm. Barn in there as yeah. well they, you know played in NPL and played you know a lot of games um so you having players like that you know again like I said mix of age for a bit of experience but also quite um, yeah. you know, players that have played quite a few NPL games Liam and I clocked up I think over 150 games in senior football now um and 23 and we're Keep keep pushing that yeah. that number on, but you know it's good it's good to have players like that. You need a bit of a mixture in a team mm. to help you know drive everyone forward. And and the players this season um, that you know been playing Saturday, they've definitely grew up a level and um, definitely improved each and every one of them. And yeah, you can show in the results and the way we're playing. When you get up to uh, next year in NPL, hopefully, if that all goes well, you guys going to tackle it any differently, or you just want that challenge again to, to get into the NPL next year? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure the coaching staff will have their own yeah. ideas of what they need to do. You know, players, things like that. Yeah. Um, so you know, leave it in their hands. But um, regarding that, yeah, I think we you know we we tackle what we have this year because the yeah. football we played is actually pretty impressive. And yeah, it's pretty pretty good. Um, and we've been pretty consistent. Obviously, everyone has their off days. But yeah, we've been pretty consistent. So no, I reckon we're going to the NPL um, tackling it. Hopefully, so we just got to focus on getting the end of the year done we can't jump a gun yet yep. we just got to focus on getting you know, a couple more games finished and then we can then we can celebrate looking at your history it looks like you love a challenge so I think <laughs> you love putting yourself in positions <laughs> where it. you uh, need to fight and challenge yourself because I think you're the type of player that especially with your brother you love that challenge What does that come from anywhere with your family or anything in particular or is it just your natural uh, yeah I think I think we're like you know our family's always um, always competitive and we always like a challenge because um, you know at the end of the day you want to you want to work hard you yeah. want to you know challenge yourself um, so that's why you know coming down to Mobbury we've we had that challenge to get back mm. up so it's a massive challenge and we want to get there so no definitely definitely love a challenge and love this year so far but we need to finish it off got to finish it off we've got really important you know we've got three yep. games in the span of a very short time you know playing you know this Saturday Cup final following week in the, yep. in the FFA Cup um, and then you know the, the week um, the Monday straight after three four days after we've got a league game uh, yeah so it's a pretty short turnaround plane flights everything yeah, it's going to be full on yeah do you have any uh weird uh superstitions you do before games or not really yeah it's actually oh, that's yeah. actually a really good question um <laughs> and i'll be honest with you no yeah. you no, don't no no, no. I, like um and a lot of players um do have that you know yeah. they've got to put the certain shoe on or the per- certain sock or they've got to touch a certain or whatever it is they've yeah. got to touch a certain part of the shirt or things like that whatever it is no I actually have none no. and I'll be honest with you I this year just wake up and whatever happens happens <laughs> yeah. no I could be gardening before a game one time and the next time I could be having a coffee it's like I don't have to do anything even yeah. when I'm putting on my kit going up a socket no Nothing. no superstitions at all no so if you started doing one, it might throw you off a little bit, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've, I, honestly, you know, some players, you know, yeah. they like doing it, and what? you know, credit to them, they can yeah. do it. But no, nah, not for me at can all. You, can you uh, reveal any uh, of the of your teammates? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, well, some, someone, <laughs> um, so, so the, one of the one of the, one of our teammates, uh, like in the warm up, yeah. um, likes to, you know, we got a passing drill. We do. He likes to start at the top of the passing drill. So the first time he touches the ball in the warm up, he's touching at the start to, um, you know, take a touch away. Just things like that. Like he has to start at the top of the top of the drill. Yeah. Um, where only one player can go and that's just his own superstition other people have to eat certain foods I can't remember someone yeah something about a certain food that they had to have or had to you know when we walk out for um, to yeah. the, you know when we walk out at the start of the game we line up they have to be at the back of the line things like that yeah jeez <laughs> that's, that's a couple uh, I won't name names has anyone tried to because I would I'd probably uh, <laughs> try and stir it up a little bit and Try and pretend to take that back spot. Has yeah. anyone tried to do that no, to throw them off? I don't think anyone does because I think obviously <laughs> yeah. we just want you know results and want to play well. Yeah. So we didn't even bother doing oh, that you sort guys of stuff. Too, you guys are too good. Yeah, uh, too good. You got to stir it up a little bit. Hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. I've heard weird ones where people drink um no not drink certain things and also uh, have to cut their toenails before certain yes. games. Yeah. It's I don't know. there's some strange <laughs> ones out there. Um, for me actually, I don't. Need, I've got pregame uh, superstitions as well. Well, not superstitions, but I listen to certain music to pump me up in the car on the way to commentating yeah. and stuff like that, just to get me nice. lift my energy up a bit. So you have nothing like that. No, don't nah, need, don't nah. need it. Honestly, we. C- I, I could go. Um, music, I think it's a good one. You know, everyone yeah. likes a bit of music, but I don't have like a certain nah. genre. I don't have to listen to certain songs. At least you can no, just no. be a slow song to it. But like you know, yeah, it could be anything. <laughs> <laughs> You've gone so far in your uh, football career. I want to finish it off quickly because you um you got to go and get ready for the. Uh, the big games coming up for you, your <laughs> club, but um, the uh, your you and your brother, you you're both great. Not only just you as a footballer, but you you got your twin brother. It's very rare you get um, identical twins that do exactly the same thing. They do. Um, you get a lot that uh, have same likes, yeah. same interests, and stuff like that. But not two that are very good footballers and are at the same level to play at the same club um, throughout ma- majority of your career. Mm. But what about your family? Because your family will be a big part. Your dad, 
your um your mum, anyone like that play football as well? Yeah, dad um played um amateur level, but then he always say he'd always say to Liam and I, he's like, Oh, where'd you get your skills from? You know, how how do you do this and that? But I think honestly we learned to um yeah. you know, obviously through coaches, but mainly we learned all our skills and our you know, our awareness and our love for the game in the backyard. You just come home from school and would literally play for hours yeah. on end with um obviously Liam, my older brother, my older sister and dad would always be outside and mum would always be in the inside and always come out as well for a bit of a kick and cook dinner and yeah. it was, we used to do it every single night, so that's where I think we learn our skills mainly so it was amazing yep so your dad's an amateur level never got to a level that you're at with your brother now <laughs> does he ever like get not jealous but is he ever <laughs> like oh i wish i was me nah dad <laughs> oh, honestly d- dad and mum are the most supportive people ever yeah. like they want us to do as well as possible and there's no jealousy or anything they literally um want us to do get the highest level we can but yep. like you can't take away no one actually realizes that your whole family and your support system yeah. your partner and things like that have a massive massive influence on the personality you have and also your footballing career people don't realize what kind of influence has they had on your career personally yeah, like honestly, just always loving you, you know, yeah. respecting you um, and always, you know, doing all the little things outside that, you know, yeah. that just take, you know, you know, have to go and, you know, sometimes wash your clothes, things like that. They'll just do it without you even knowing, um, you know, even when you leave the house, everyone's do, always doing stuff, cooking food for you, so you don't have to worry about it when you get, um, yep. you know, lunch in the day, they will be prepared. Just take the stresses off and also, you know, you can debrief with them, you can talk with them, you know, whether you had a bad game, good game. It's just yep. all that sort of side, people just don't realise. And you got a partner as well. Yeah. Um, so... What's that like support for yourself as well? Oh, it's, yeah, it's the best thing ever. Cause, yeah. You know, Caitlin, she always, um, we always, you know, after games, you know, we debrief, we talk, and it's just always just to take your mind off of soccer, no matter if it's good, bad. Yeah. Um, you know, go out to dinner or, you know, even just sit in the room, chat or watch a movie. Um, it's the best thing ever, and she's been the best support. Yeah. Yep. Well, hopefully you don't have to uh, debrief and um, get your mind off the uh, the cup <laughs> fine, the cup, um, <laughs> the fair, th- round of 32, because you want to remember that for a long time. Hopefully it's successful for you guys. For sure. That's exactly <laughs> what we want. Yep. Um, but, um, Hopefully that's uh, that's the case for you, but you've luckily you've got a very supportive family by the looks of it, but what's it like juggling your full-time job as a physiotherapist and football as well, hand in hand? How, what's that like? It's full on, yeah, because obviously we see a lot of clients in the day, um, yeah. so back to back, and then you know then we've got soccer at night, so we don't have a lot of downtime at all, so yeah. it takes up a lot of time, soccer and physio, yeah. but I, I love it, but yeah, it's, no, it's really, really good. Do you get a lot of um, sports athletes or whatever come to your physio, or is that all you yeah. do? Yeah. No, no, so we, have, we have some come through, but um, our, our sort of physio practice um, can be anyone, any yeah. age, sort of thing like that, it's a lot, a lot of disability, which is, you know, really okay, area yeah. which needs that support and also a bit of the aged care sector as well yeah so it's good does that help you when you do things like if someone hurts themselves on the pitch you know yeah. all right <laughs> need to do this or whatever you, yeah does that help you in some certain areas yeah it's especially <laughs> like if we hurt ourselves yeah. we sort of know what rehab we've got to do and things like that um, yeah but yeah no it's it's yeah it's amazing uh, you speak very well mate and um i have to come see you if i have any treatment uh, <laughs> <laughs> physiotherapy mate sure. but i've really enjoyed um chatting with you you got you got a very uh, level head on yourself and hopefully you and your brother make it further in your career because For you're sure. only 23 years old you're in state league one Yourself, you're a current uh, Sergio Melder winner. You're about to play round of 32 in the Australia Cup. You've made a, ca- a cup final appearance in the Federation Cup in South Australia. You've done a lot. You've helped another team already get promoted. You're about to potentially do it again with a different team. <laughs> you played youth, oh, geez, oh, oh, youth for LA United as well. Like this is, I love it. It's great, and that's what I love about this community no, because you. it's a big community. There's big personalities, and hopefully, uh, you've got a few- big future ahead of you as well thanks so much I really appreciate it no worries mate but before I let you go I can't let you go before this one kicking at questions every guest gets it and you're not any different because you're going to get it as well who would you love to kick it with on the park anyone in the world Chris Aronado He's, nope. he's fine, he's fine, yeah, he's he's the person that I've always loved as a kid and yep. I love watching, I've got DVDs of him at home that I used to always watch. Yeah, definitely him, if I could have a chance of him, for sure. Yeah, well you would have been disappointed when you saw you were going to be, you were potentially going to be in the same state as him, but now he pulled out of the <laughs> yeah, Manchester United. That would have been awesome, yeah, but no, that's all good. <laughs> but um, there you go, and then who would you love to kick it with uh, Kick it, kick it with on a Saturday night, on the couch, and watch a football game? Someone locally, someone international. Oh, I think, yeah, I, th- I think locally, like, you know, always Mark Bosnich is always, a, you know, yeah. a good one. He's sometimes, you, yeah. know, um, in, you know, in South Australia doing stuff. But, yeah, he, I reckon he'd be a yeah. really good person um, be to fun. do with that. Yeah, and, and honestly, internationally, he doesn't know a lot of commentary, but Sean Wright Phillips, he's yep. played for Man City. I'd love to sit down with him yep. and have a good chat. He's one of my favourite players I think that's well. gonna be, that'll be a fun night, I think. Yeah, I reckon that'd be great. <laughs> and the type of character he is, I'd absolutely love that. Yeah, mate, it sounds like a lot of fun uh, on that night. Will you invite your brother as well? Or was he kicked out that no, night? No, Lee's coming. Yep, Liam will be coming. Yeah, yeah, nice. For sure. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you uh, joining me on my podcast and uh, all the best for your future. And hopefully, I'll chat to you uh, at some point when you're 
high up there playing <laughs> professional football in the A-League, hopefully. Yeah, no, nah, thank you. I think what you do for the podcast, your podcast is great. And I think, you know, you get a lot of ins and outs and do really good stuff for the football community. So thank you for having me. And yeah, it's been awesome. Nah, absolute pleasure, man. I appreciate you coming on and uh, all the best with your future. Thank you so much. You too. That was the current Sergio medal winner from 2021 in the RAA, NPL, SA and current player for the Modbury Jets in the St. League 1, Hamish McKay. Make sure you subscribe to Kicking It Local wherever you get your podcasts so you can get a taste of the SA football community. Plus, follow at Kicking It Local SA on Instagram and Twitter so you don't miss any of the action. See you soon.